Hi everybody, I'm Justin Boost and I'm here to show you the Artisan but Pens brush pack for Corel Painter, uh, the full version. There are 15 brushes in this brush pack just like any other um, brush pack that Corel provides. Uh, and what I would like to go over today is some of my own line work that the different effects of these different brushes would make for an image like this. Uh, typically when I ink a picture, I use a one to two pixel pen on uh, any given canvas depending on how big the canvas is and I try to think about that canvas as a, a real life size. Um, so these brushes are, I'm gonna go over with some of go over some of my two pixel brush worker here or pen work and show you kind of the difference it would make and how that this would look in certain areas. So the part I was working at earlier um, was the bottom of these little branches. That's probably where I could probably show you the most. And I'm gonna go down these brushes and kind of show you how I would use them in an illustration um, if I were to use these over a pen uh, or instead of a pen. So I'm gonna start with the Alive brush. I really like this brush. Um, that's why I named it Alive because it feels so much like so. Um, and then with, with this stroke, what we have is a pressure sensitive. If I press harder, it's going to start moving. If I, I can do this little kind of cool sketchy line, but again, as soon as I start using pressure, the, the brushwork just kind of becomes alive. So I'm going to go over some of my little stump work here, and you can kind of see I should be maybe a little more, more delicate. One thing I'm actually bad at is line weight, and it shows. And so you can see how that if I were to go over this with my brush, how much this actually changes the way that this would present itself as an image if it were rendered with this instead. So I'm gonna keep that there and we're gonna kind of build upon this and kind of see the different ex expressions. One, I've, I've, got to, I've got to show here that I have a bunch of noise on my illustration, but if I were to have a white canvas, whoops, this, this little bleed brush especially if you're getting close up to the details. Excuse my zoom there. You can kind of see how that just kind of helps add some little flex around your image. If I were to go back to this, it kind of just helps add some expressiveness. Again, you can't really see it with all that noise there, but if I had a line, I could, I could add some cool little bleed around there. Just kind of like when you are using a pen and it actually kind of trips on the texture. I always kind of like it when that happens. Um, so let's go back to the next brush which is just called brush and the reason is because when we use it it's really thin but if I'm gonna turn it all this is kind of a let's go with this curve right here let's turn the size up whoops gotta play with that size a little bit to figure out where you're at it kind of looks like I did that with a with a nice brush but it's very controlled so as someone who's not very good at the line work side of things, this can be kind of useful if you kind of want that brushed effect anywhere in your work. Um, so let's go to the next one. Crease is really neat, a very subtle brush, but it's kind of something you can see with my, my pixel stroke here. You have to kind of work it in and you can build like a, a crease in your work. I recommend this for, let's say you want a line to kind of sink in. You can, this is very, I'm going to zoom in to the point where it's pixelated. So let's see what 100% looks like. Well, let's, let's just get ugly for a second. So I can take this and kind of add more of a crease effect to my line. You know, as some of you people that work with lines and ink might know by now, um, lines are very subtle and that's what I like about them personally and it's nice to be able to make this change that zoomed out you can't really see exactly what I'm doing there with the pen it's almost like a little brush it's intended to be subtle and so now when I zoom out you kind of my lines sink in a little there it kind of probably blends with that noise a little too much I have a lot of noise I added to this illustration kind of wanted it to look organic uh, but let's open up that white canvas again. And you can see how that it kind of has that crease look to it. 
So let's let's go to the, the dry brush here. And this is kind of, if you make it small, this is kind of a nice little dry idea pen. It's a little chunky feeling, but, but wispy also. Let's turn this off and go back to the illustration here. And if I had this bigger, you could see how that this might change something. Let's let's say I'm going to add one of these right here. Okay, if I were to render this whole thing with this in, instead of this line, you kind of have like that nice loose pen stroke. It's very nervous. Um, the felt pen, I absolutely love playing with this. This is for some thicker, bolder strokes, and you can see if I were to use this, things would be things would kind of look like you used a big dried out felt pen. The playing with the opacity on this one is very fun. You can see how that that just looks like you picked up some old brush you got at Michaels a few years ago and you were just trying to pump some artwork out with it. Let's see what kind of effect this has. So you can see how that works also. You can kind of see as we go along that these brushes they're kind of they've kind of got that grungy expression once you take uh, when you once you take them out of that just two pixel uh, round line work. So then we've got the fountain pen here, and this one is self-explanatory. It's just supposed to act like a fountain pen. I tried to make this one duplicate my own fountain pen that I use. Um, I actually add just a little bit of water to my ink sometimes to kind of give it this this nice little opacity uh, Indiana ink feel to it. Um, anybody can kind of get a pen that just kind of is pressure sensitive and has the dab of a fountain pen. So I kind of wanted this one to make your stroke a fountain pen, but also expressive as well. Uh, so you can kind of see how, whoops, that would be kind of a cool way to make these. Some of these brushes aren't the best example for this line work, but I do enjoy comparing it and showing you kind of what it would look like in the realm of some of these lines. Uh, the next pen's fun. This is the glitter pen, and I intend to use this one. Uh, if you were to pick a color, this one has a lot of color variation to it. So if I pick like a like a green, and let's say that I wanted to do some of these lines, I'm probably just going to come over to the side here after a while. You can kind of see how that would, especially if you use it small, it's just kind of got that nice old-fashioned, school-styled glitter pen that you can do some cool sketching with. I wish I could make it glimmer on the screen. Uh, I don't know if they have glitter pen technology coming yet. Uh, I highly doubt it, um, but that would be kind of cool for weird purposes, I suppose. Maybe videos, advertisements. <laughs> so let's look at the idea pen. This one, I've got to say, when I make some ideas, I like to grab a big pen I have a certain model of it and I like them to be nice and old dried out and gives me some pressure sensitivity um, has some cool pressure to it that just kind of helps you go in and out of your image um, kind of pull depth from it let's go to jitter and this pen you can kind of see if I were to do this, it's like a similar to the brush that I use here, but it's got a nice hard jitter to it. Just again, self-explanatory. We try to name them that way. If you do it quick, you get a little more jitter. If I wasn't following lines, maybe that would be a cool intention to have. But right now, uh, you know, I'm tracing something. So uh, newsprint is definitely something I was playing with earlier on these branches. And this is really cool, especially if you make the brush big, because it kind of looks like that faded news, not faded, sorry. Kind of like the ink is like not that great. It's on that paper. You can feel it on the paper. I can almost smell a newspaper when I use this. I kind of have always liked the comics. But if I were to kind of go to town with this illustration, with this, you could definitely see how it would start to. Oh, look at we got those lines in finally that I've been missing for so long. I always find that one thing wrong. 
kind of a cool look to it. Let's zoom out and kind of see how things are looking. The difference in all these different little expressions. They all do that one inky thing, but oh so differently upon looking at them closer. Um, poster is fun. Uh, I always enjoyed the looking at the old posters that they used to kind of put glue on the back of them and put them on brick walls. And this one, you can do any color, of course. But it's kind of like that statement kind of pen. And you could do some big canvases with this. Kind of cool and easy to use fast. You can see how bold that would be. You can make lettering with it. Let's go to roller skate. Oops, sorry. I try to get it 100% so you guys aren't looking at blurry canvas. So this one is fun to add effects with off to the side. I wouldn't really recommend drawing with this one too much. You could. It would be a little bit like a live. It's not very bold. I guess you could make some cool ideas with it. But I kind of made it for some cool little wisps that you could add to your work. Uh, maybe some calligraphy, rendering something a certain way. And then we have Slick. And Slick is also self-explanatory. I should say they all are. <laughs> um, and we're going to just make some nice slick strokes. You can see how that if this were the artwork, it would be, it would look, I myself have a hard time making slick strokes. That, that sounds crazy, but I just kind of, I don't know. I'm from very A to B drawing. And sometimes I want something to kind of look quick or, you know, hatched in a little. And I think this would be kind of cool to play with, especially when sketching. Uh, triple is very fun. And this brush is pressure sensitive. And it's, it's one pen, as you can see. But as I press, it's a multi-pen. And um, if I were to use this right here and do some rendering with this, you can get some pretty trippy effects. I think it worked out using this for examples. You can kind of just, again, see the difference between just that two pixel line and what it looks like to kind of render with these pens and see what that would look like as an illustration a little bit more um, than just seeing a bunch of lines that are a different thickness and texture. Um, anyways, I look forward to seeing what kind of illustrations you guys make with these. Um, as well as myself, as someone who, as you can see, I just really love my ink. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.